working in the back of my truck where we're going to take this original deck three batteries big deep cycles now it used to have two batteries used to sit down here and there is a uh, a cut in that's right under here we're going to use the same thing for running our wire back to our to our alternator or to our battery up front of the truck so what we've got here is we've got a compartment that we're making and we're building it with wood it's got inch and a half angle and i had a very 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 inexperienced welder that put this in so i'm going to be coming back in and to make sure that it's strong it is fairly strong um, but the guy that put it in was an auto mechanic. He wasn't a welder. Um, so what we're going to do with this is we're going to take and we're going to put the batteries in here and a big inverter, 3000 watt, right over here, this inverter. And I've got a huge mess in my shop. So this big inverter here, which is a 3000 watt peak, and I'll put a link down at the bottom if you're interested in these. Now, I have ran a... A small Harbor Freight 90 amp MIG on low with this inverter. It does it. It actually works on it. it. It won't overheat. It runs extremely well. This inverter, which is not, although it appears to be by its design, a thousand, thousand, and thousand up here with control circuitry, it's actually a 3000. They just built it in this design to look like, I guess, you know, what was popular. But at Amazon, I get these for two and a quarter delivered with the cables. Badass inverter. They're really good. What we've got here is we do have that generator going back in the truck when needed. And that was the original one that was used for the demolition works. But we have these batteries. So this battery bank now has replaced what used to set up there. And that's where those three batteries came from. Now we're going to go ahead and get it, these cleaned up make some better bars because this is just this was just for a slave battery and what we have here is we have this little unit here now this is a very handy little unit and I'll put you a link to that this is a very nice unit let me see if you can read that right there it says on here where it cuts in, it, it, it cut in is 13.3 volts and it disconnects off of, from your system at 12.8 volts, which it should be the standing voltage of your automotive battery. So this, with a little small ground wire on it to activate bolts in the back that can handle, and, and I've used, this is old. This actually came from my, my original use for explosives so this one will mount in here on the firewall of this truck i used to have it in my diesel pickup and it worked beautiful so this will sit right back here and it's going to have a it's going to run over to the uh the positive and then it'll run that same gauge down and back and i'll have a chaser along with another anchor to the to the frame that'll run back and go to the frame of the of the uh go to the frame of the the bed so we have the bed is is grounded but i want to put an additional you know just add a little ground to it just in case so that's what we're doing and you would love these they work great they're worth every dime you pay for them and they last forever and they're sealed they're very good i prefer them um, over a regular isolator they work like an isolator all right so let's go to this next step and we will start this process i'll finish the framing and you'll see the batteries installed and that inverter and then we'll do a power test on everything all right so what we have now is we have this big inverter big peak sitting in here with three batteries i've got the negative there and the positive there the positive on the uh, inverters here and the negatives on here the inverter will sit in here and be completely free of any issues or damage away from this up here where it might leak or drip and we're also going to have it <clears throat> completely caulked in and this painted very well before we install everything so there's your setup pretty nice big inverter that thing is uh kind of about 20 pounds so it sets sets nice and those batteries are i believe 71 pounds a piece so there is about 220 215 pounds basically sitting right there full of batteries 
Next is that we have already drilled the holes. And here is the big bus bars made out of Type L soft copper with 3 8 OD copper inside of it. This thing here weighs about two and a half pounds. It's heavy, very heavy. And it will be getting drilled and put in connecting the batteries together, both sides. And we're actually going to have the pull for the negative run down and run on top of this and then drop. Um, that way we balance it out by pulling from here and pulling and pulling from here. So positive pull from here and negative pull from here. Balances the batteries very well. Okay, so now what we have here is we've went ahead and got our wiring done, but I'm using four. So this is number four wire right here. And it's going to a 250 amp switch right here that is mounted to disconnect what's running to the back through this uh, fire resistant poly tube that they use in motorhomes. I've got that run all the way underneath and back up to keep the wires protected, strapped up in the frame. And over here, we have the same thing, four gauge over here grounded to the battery using these large terminals like this one right here. It's quite a large terminal. It will handle um, up to three gauge. So it's, 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 you can probably wedge some two in there, but three goes in easy, four goes in real easy. So, all right, now back here in the back, we've got the wire coming up here. We have the ground wire over here running and it's going to run up to this side of the battery because what I am doing is I'm coming from this side of the battery for the negative going to the inverter, like I said earlier, and from that side of the battery with the positive going to the inverter so that we balance this battery out and we pull equally. And over here, we're going to have a 100 amp A and L fuse that will go in right there. So we'll put this in and I'll just give it kind of a little spot glue with some shoe goo to keep it from vibrating loose. And it goes up here. Now this is a terminal here in its own. It is anchored onto the positive side, has a hole right up here in the top you can see, and we're gonna run a bolt through it and put the wire from it down to here. And this is how we're gonna charge the batteries, but also be able to isolate them here and isolate them in here right before that. So this is the electronic brain slash SSR solid state relay 140 amp isolator. So as an isolator, what it does is anything above 12.8 volts, it'll start charging and sending it back. Once it drops down to that 12.8 volts, because of this ground wire connected, it can sense that it will shut off, saving my truck battery, which is a very old battery. It's a 2004 or three or four battery. I restored it with magnesium and it's working great. So this big 460 has a 140 or 160 amp alternator. And so it's going to be sending power back to that bank of batteries. And we'll finish this out showing how everything got cooked up and run something off of it. And you'll see how this truck becomes a big power plant. All right, now back here in the back of the truck, we have the batteries all hooked up. And you can see the way the cables are laid out. That big cable right there is going to a kind of a monstrosity there, but just being used as a very large clamp so that it can hold the cable going to that side. And we put new bolts and then I tapped the supply to put a meter on going forward, going up there in the front. So I'll have a meter that I can see from the truck inside the truck and I can watch these batteries and what they're doing. This up here is currently disconnected from the front of the truck and we're about to hook that up. So let's see what just the reserve power in these batteries that's been sitting for about six months, what it's capable of. So we're gonna go ahead and plug it in. And this is 3,000 watts, so it's good for using it for an electric chainsaw out on my property, amongst other things. 
and you can see from all of this down in here how all this is ran it is quite sufficient from this bank of batteries that are 105 amps a piece coming through here so I've got 315 amps plus continuous charge coming from the truck if I'm running the truck if I'm not running the truck it will not pull power from the truck's battery the way I've set this up all right so kind of cool guys got to do this for yourself if you like it thumbs up and I'll put you a link where I got that big big ass inverter it's a sweetheart and I think you'll like it Now, what we have here is we have my resting battery back here is 12.71. So right now they're just sitting. Uh, they're pretty hot for what they are. And this is that the battery bank here in the back. And the fuse is in that feeds it. It's a 100 amp. Uh, never intending to draw down anything more than that. And up here in the front, the old truck battery has got 12.77, 12.78 sitting in it. And the switch is in the off position. Right angle is the on position, which is kind of strange. So what we're going to do is we're gonna fire this truck up um, here in just a second. But what I've got for you is this remote. You see this little unit right here? It's got outlets in it. And it's a very good little little setup that's going to go inside my pickup up inside up here and it has on it a remote from inside the truck to be able to turn on the inverter nice and gives me 1850 watts of power 5 amps of USB power um, can run quite a bit on it and these this is that one that has that really strange checkered kind of like a little tiny stair steps or sawtooth sine wave instead of just the big blocks so it's pretty damn smooth even for a computer so let's go ahead and we'll shut this back off and we will uh, fire the truck up see what the voltage is on the charging 14.46 right now that's the charging voltage and I want you to watch this down here and listen to that alternator because those batteries are low so I just turned the switch on and it's charging the batteries in the back those batteries in the back getting 14.1 volts. Not too damn shabby, huh? So when I turn the engine off, it disconnects this bank of batteries from the car battery. It does a very good job of it. And I can also manually turn it off if I need to service anything. All right, that's it. And I'll put a link to where I got that isolator and you're really gonna like that thing believe me it's a hell of a good unit it's got leds that tell you when you reach your your full charge and it'll come on when you are dropping below your static save on your battery here all right guys pretty cool thing huh now we got all that power ready to be used and that's LED. That's an LED. Look how well it runs on this thing. No flicker. Pretty good. All right, y'all be good. I know that's a long video, but hope it helps people. Hope you can figure out how to do this yourself. It's not that hard.